Hey guys, welcome back. It's Scott here with Scott's Speed Shop and with Dad who was standing behind me. But I came out here because I thought I might want to go toot around on the old Alice Chalmers because there's just something about tooting around on an old tractor. It's just magical. You know, you can have a Hemi car, you can have hot rods, but it's just something magical about a tractor. I come out here and I come to this. What in the world are you up to? I'm trying to get the brakes fixed. You don't need brakes. Brakes are for quitters, I know, but it's kind of handy when you're working on the hills with your brush cutter. Yeah. So. I'm gonna roll off into the lake. Uh, heavy, I, yeah, I probably that wouldn't be too good. <coughs> so this is dead 1958 Alice Chalmers D14. And this is just a sweet old machine, a running son of a gun. And yes, we know the wheels ain't painted right, but we like this paint scheme a lot more. The cream grill, cream wheels, just way better than that silver. There's nothing on the tractor, it's silver. And yes, I know we have a 17 wheel on there too, but kind of customized. See, this looks so much better. But yeah, dad's been working on getting these brakes working. And I know we're way ahead of everybody as far as this, but we wanted to go ahead and do this side, see how it's gonna work. And then we'll show you how we do all of this. Now we've designed this and hopefully it works. And not everybody's gonna have a crane, but I know a lot of uh, you farmers out there and you tractor enthusiasts, you're all pretty smart and pretty good at coming up with, uh, well, ways around things, workarounds. Yeah, you should probably take the tire off, but when you got a crane like mine, why well, I take it off? Yeah, the auto crane is a godsend. If you ever watch our videos, you'll see we use this thing extensively because we have it. I figured the crane would kind of, or the tire would kind of help keep the right elevation going in. Yep. Yeah. And you got the tractor actually blocked up with railroad ties, so good and safe there. First thing I did was drain the oil out of the gear case. That would be a good first step. And I had to take the, and that was almost five gallons. And then I had to take the uh, floorboards off. And then the four bolts around here. Well, the nuts. Basically, yeah, the nuts, and basically just slid her right off. Yep. Going to break the brake linkage. I mean, I've got this kind of, I got this put together. Seems to be working pretty good. I had the biggest issue, let me show you these seagulls from my Alice Chalmers guys that's gonna watch. You have a hell of a time finding a seal. National 70, 7484, basically non-existent unless you can go through Alice Chalmers or something, I don't know. Nobody in town had it. The one in Steiner ain't ain't the same. So I went to O'Reilly's and they've crossed this number. It's a national. 470163. And it's identical uh, dimensions. And it's actually about the only one that's actually wide, like a half inch wide almost. Yeah, it's an inch and a quarter by two by 43 and seven. It fits the groove pretty good. 437 thousandths. It's a dual lip seal with it. It's actually a triple, triple lip because it's got this O-ring kind of embedded in there with it. Yeah. But I guess they don't do that anymore or something because it's not available. They probably simplified it. Now these seals here, I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. As long as these were like right original way. 1958 stuff. Yeah. Both of my brakes were just soaked in gear oil. Well, that's why they weren't working. Oh, they worked enough to get it unloaded off the track, yeah. off the trailer. <laughs> you stand on them hard enough. <coughs> hey. So, yeah. I mean, it's all pretty straightforward. I'd say if Master Mechanic, Wise Wrenching Wizard, Dad can figure it out, most of y'all can too, but figure, you know, we'll just do a little video on it. You know, if anybody's got any questions, you know, they can ask. And uh, it's just the way we do it. I know there's a couple other videos out there, but I guess there's nothing specifically on a D14. No, the D14's about the only one that's got this style, uh, almost like a truck. Most of them have a external clamp, it'll be like a band or a brake drum on both sides, and they got a pin that you gotta burn out. What I watched in the videos, but that ain't nothing like a D14. Well, it seems to be in the D17, they all seem to have that different pin and the external drum deal. Or this one's got the drum in here. And it's removable. If, if it was bad, I could press it off that shaft. 
but this one was pretty good shape. It was oil soaked. Yeah. Took a, cleaned it up with brake cleaner and then flapper wielded to get the glaze off of it. And I'm hoping for the best on that because I didn't order any brake drums. <laughs> as far as the brake shoes, these are replacements. They're old originals, right? Yeah. So oh. I, I scored the two complete sets off eBay. And this had pretty good shoes on it. And I'm still waiting on the UPS for my new... I got new linings coming, new rivets. I'm jump, probably, probably jumping the gun here. But these look pretty good shape. I want to get it buttoned up before it starts raining. Yeah, it's supposed to storm pretty good. And I went over these, and I think these are going to work just fine. They got a lot of life left in them, as you can look in the witness marks of the rivets. So those ought to work pretty good. But that's what we're doing. Hopefully, you always Chalmers guys and my regular viewers enjoy this. This was Dad's brainchild of a video. So, enjoy it. We'll check in in a minute. Safe. Really ain't doing anything. Tire weighs a little bit more than thought. They'll call it a safety chain. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna swing over that way. Alrighty. Put a little silicone on that right for the way we gotta do that right now. That the silicone don't set up too fast. Give it one more wipe down. Treat the tractors just like the hot rods. If you I want mean, silicone to seal, you gotta have it clean. It's a giant weep hole here, so it really ain't sealing anything. You know? That's true. When dad's laying that silicone, I'm gonna wipe down right here. And just like, like what I just said, silicone won't stick to oil. So you gotta make sure this is clean. Take pride in your work. Is you get in what you put, you get out, you get out what you put in. Only the premium quality ultra black RTV. Mm. Well, they probably sell a gasket, but this one didn't have a gasket on it either. All right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> Oh, uh, you guys ever work with silicone? You know it's a glorious smell. Oh yeah. Be a little tricky getting mine back up. Yeah, come up a little bit. You don't want to damage that seal. No. Get those splines lined up. All right, we got it back on, at least this side. That's a little tricky getting those splines lined up and the studs all of it all at once. But it's on there now. We'll get those nuts put on there, let that silicone seal, get all this stuff hooked back up. <coughs> well, maybe not. If we still gotta do that side, and that's the side we're gonna show you a little more in depth. Pretty simple stuff, what it looks like. You got a crane. But like I said, most of you old farmers, you guys are a lot bigger than us, a lot more stout. I'm more creative with your solutions. 
Little anti seize goes a long ways. Yeah. Yeah, don't grab that end. <laughs> All right, well, we'll check in in a minute. Well, that's gonna be it for tonight. Hopefully it don't rain on us tomorrow. We'll get the rest of our parts. We'll disassemble that side, get it all fixed. This side's done for now. So, thanks for watching so far. All you Alice Chalmers cool people, because you like Alice Chalmers? They're cool in our book. And we got a Hemi Charger. All righty, and we're back. After a raging monsoon of rain, we're waiting for a good day to do this where it wouldn't be raining on us. And well, it's gonna rain tomorrow, so we're gonna get to work on that. A little note, if you buy the kit from Steiner on how to do redo the rivets in your brake pads, dad learn, you only hit them once or you will crack your brake liner, your brake shoes. Yeah, I brought this concert show. Actually, a really good thing, you know, instead of paying what was it, a hundred dollars per shoe? It was a hundred dollars per set for a set of shoes with renew linings on it, or twenty dollars for linings which come with rivets and the linings. And how much was the little tool? The tool was 30 bucks, and you know, it's reusable. Yeah, and you get all the stuff to here's, do it. Here's what it, you got to be careful of, though. You don't I, hit it more than once. And I had one of my one of my steel parts, the, the shoe itself, it had been working loose where the lining was loose and the rivets, and it actually made the holes too big. And this is what happened here. I tried to rivet it into a big hole and it won't ever tighten up. So sometimes I guess you just gotta throw away the shoe and get a new shoe, but these were in good shape. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it just, it's easy. I mean, this takes the, Knock the old rivet out. And mount this in the vise. Yep. Knock the old rivet out. Then you put this little gilly bobber in there. I set the little ri I set the rivet right on there. And one little smack, and it, it's all you need. Yeah. Then Putting on the size of the hammer. hammer. Yeah. You just move on to the next one. Yep. And that that. That fits right in that hole. That fit. That worked perfectly. Uh -huh. So now we're gonna get this whole other wheel, axle, tube, whatever you want to call this conglomeration, off. Clean it up and uh, get her done. Here he comes with a burger on a bun. See, we got the we got the fender off of this side. Yeah. The other side had the toolbox on top of these bolts and I didn't want to mess with my toolbox because I figured I'd break everything in it. So typical fashion, the one I go to take out, pull the whole stud out, so we want to be cautious of that. <clears throat> now we use the auto crane, pull this whole sum gun off. There's still a flat or a block washer on that one. Get it off. Crane makes everything a lot easier. Woo! Well, I guess we didn't I need to move a strap further in. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be why them brakes ain't working too good. Look at all that crap. It's actually worse than the other side. Yeah. <laughs> See how wet that is? Yeah. That's why it ain't working where the dang. Can't have oil on them brakes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I'm gonna have to stand this on something 
rerig it. All right, well, I'm gonna help Dad do that. We'll check in. So he's got done spraying out the brake drum inside here. Not too bad, not too bad. There's a lot of scraping that needs to be done on this side, however. Uh, Oof. Take out these four bolts. Yep. And uh, should be able to come right off. The old saying is anything worth doing is worth doing right. That's right. Except we're not going to do it exactly right. We're going to. I mean, technically, the right way would be to get these shoes, you know, get a new surface put on them. But they'll be fine. They'll be fine. So we'll just keep cleaning. I mean, it's all pretty simple stuff, especially when you got the auto crane and you got all these tools and stuff. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. And wrench? Yeah, I need to take this plate off here. Okay. One nice thing about tractors, you really don't have to know what you're doing to do it. I mean, of course, you get yourself in trouble like anything, but. I mean, it's all pretty simple stuff. I kind of wish that one stud didn't come out. That's kind of a Yeah, we might walk tired. We're going to get the nut off of it. I'm not even going to use this. I got that other one that I got on eBay. Oh, yeah, the one that's already cleaned? Yeah, and it's got a whole ring. So it must be a little later version. I think this just comes right on off there. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it'll come right off. Untouched since 1958, more than likely. I think this right here just comes right off. Now you can get them four bolts out. Oh, yeah. That's the seal back in there. Yeah. That's a machine fits. You don't want it to cast iron. You don't want to get stupid with it. Yep. Yeah. Well, Ben, going around in a circle. It'll come off. Let's see, I got another one. I don't know how the mud daubers. <laughs> oh, they're Alice Chalmers mud daubers. Yeah. There's a they shim. Had, they had good taste. The other side of the carrier. And it looks like it's in great shape. Well, that stuff will be rust in there. But, eh, old tractor, what do you expect? Uh -oh. So, lots of cleaning. But Dad's got all that already clean. This here's uh, the, the one from the other side, but here's this is solid here. Yeah. This is the one I got off eBay. See, they've made an O-ring mm. to help keep it from leaking so I think I'll use this one the o-ring's probably dead well I got this o-ring the gas didn't do the o-ring any justice that o-ring's dead yeah I brought one home from work but I think it's too small so I need to get this seal out here yeah the new seal in Try to pop that seal out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put it in the vise. Yeah. Definitely yeah, get him with a hook. Something with a hook. Mm -hmm. Can't get a bite on it yet. So what I see Dad's trying to do is he's trying to just catch that glip, that seal. You just barely find that lip right in there. I don't think you can pop it out the other way. Nope, that's not unless you could pull it out, which we don't have means to do that, so we got to try and get in there and just pop. You can just barely see that lip in there, so you just got to barely get a hold of that and pop it out. Yeah, 
He's tearing the shit out of it so far. I wonder if we can get at it from this side. Might be able to collapse it. See, I think. New game plan. You get some drive right in between the edge of this lip and the machine surface and the hub here is that sheet metal and that seal will give way before we damage this so that's what we're going to do huh bendix bendix brand make good stuff so we're going to keep going when we figure it out we'll show you help got that son of a gun Dad ended up using his magic wizard bow powers to make this thing turn and eventually just gave up. I don't know how he did it. But it's out of there now. So now, you get to put in that new guy with Dad's already showed you the part number. Hopefully it's the same. Hopefully they didn't mess this thing up to where he takes some kind of special deal. I remember where I put the new seal. What? You lost it? Dad. Yeah. And you can't throw it to old age. Oh man. Oh, we gotta find it before we can put it in. So, typical Scott luck. A sample of how much rain we've gotten. That bucket was dry. And now it's a little pond. Hope you didn't have anything in there you wanted to keep. Ooh. My sandpaper. Thank God the seal wasn't in there. All right, so we got that hub all cleaned up. Yeah, it's got some marks in here, whether or not we caused those or not, I don't know. Really don't know if we put that big old gouge in there or not. There's that seal. Here's his part number again, which is 470-163 National Oil Seals brand. One and a quarter by two by 437 thousandths. Make sure you put it in the right way, dude. Yeah, we're stealing oil in, not out, so it goes in just like that, just like the old one was. Yep. And the axle will slide right in there. Mm-hmm. That's an inch and a half socket. Yep, Dad had an O-ring in his stash. Fit on there really snug. It'll be perfect, hopefully. Get this shim off of here. Clean that shim up, put it on here. A little bit of squeeze on that O-ring, on that uh, shim. Then we'll flog it with silicone. Of course, we'll get the brakes all reassembled. Then we'll flog it with silicone. Make sure it sticks and stays adhered so we don't keep losing oil because well oil is cheap or expensive. We don't want to keep wasting it. And we gotta get this stud figured out too. Get that stud reinstalled or maybe just leave it as a bolt. I don't know. Alright. A little bit of silicone, just a little bit. A bit of white grease on that seal, just to make sure it don't get torn or oh, really bad. Damage that little sealing lip on it. When we showed the axle through there. Yep. And it pre lubes it for until the oil gets up to it. Alright, so now we just gotta put these bolts back in. I'm gonna help dad because this looks like it might be kind of a mess, just one person, so now with the uh silicone on there, the white lithium grease on the new seal. Blue Loctite on the bolts. Dad's going to run those in a little bit at a time. Not to stress anything. Got a crisscross pattern just like you do on your wheels. Alright, so this funky little deal. We'll put that on the right way the first time. Apologize about wind noise if there is any. Yeah, so the brake goes out. 
So that's the way it's supposed to be like that. Okay. That's the one that came with that. So you got the extra greasy one. Get that one. Ooh, we got a hard spot. Don't really look straight to me. I'd be gentle with it. Thank you, Eddie. There we go. Bottom flat on top. I'm sure there could be a, a joke. You didn't bring pliers, did you? No, I'm right here. Oh. Can I get the other shoe. You go up inside this slot here. Inside that slot, mm -hmm. just like that. Couldn't have much more simple brakes. You know? Yeah. These springs are kind of tough. Get my big old fat pliers in the right position. Just like that, she got new shoes. You know, it was doing your Alice Chalmers good. You know, it was doing your motor good. Well, I had to modify Grandpa's thing a little bit there. You can take this cotter key out here and run this thread all the way back. Yeah. But to adjust that. Yeah. So now we got a bunch of little stuff to do. You get the gist of that. This is already clean. Might spray this out one more time. Well, you can take the flapper wheel and break that glaze. Yeah. So, a bunch of little stuff to do. We need to clean this gasket surface, but we'll check in. But it's not so boring and useless stuff. You guys already know how to do. Just that easy when you got a crane. Like I said, you old farmers, you're a lot bigger, more stout, more in shape. You guys probably just manhandle this stuff by hand. So we'll get all these bolts and everything reconnected. We'll check in. All right, so I smoothed out the silicone. Made it look a lot nicer. Will she spin? I don't know. Can we get to this strap? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Your hand's kind of in the way. You want me to activate the brake? Turn that other way. Yeah. This turns a little bit freer than the other one. The other one's got the brake hooked up. Yeah. This one ain't got hooked up yet. Go ahead and turn. Can you turn it? Oh, that's a lot stiffer. That's locked up. Run in there. How about that? I might be right on for push that brake pedal. Yeah, say so I'll spin this, you push the brake pedal. I want to make them both about the same. Ain't no moving it when you push that brake pedal. Yeah, I don't move. We'll get the fender put on, <coughs> fill it up with new fluids. You can go call, call this tractor back ready to service and ready to rock with brakes finally. Man, we won't roll into the lake. 
Yeah, that would not be good, especially with this beautiful Alvis Chalmers. Yeah. Also, Dad's custom brush card he made. We've seen a lot of people make custom ones. Well, I've seen some of the originals, but this bad boy, <laughs> you could call it overkill. And it works fantastic, because you don't want this beautiful face getting all torn up. I still, I, I still wanted Dad, you know, to, you know, instead of doing the flat bar here, I was thinking, you know, have like a little diamond. See, you saw that shining through the diamond, but this was simpler. And we didn't have enough steel to do what I wanted to do. So we'll get all this other stuff buttoned up, and uh, maybe go we'll tear up the backyard with the old Alice. No. Yeah, no, we're not going to tear up the backyard. I was out tooting around when we brought this thing in. I just sat there for probably 20 minutes just tooting around in circles, having a blast. There ain't just something can't beat a tractor. I just really can't. Especially good old Alice. Good running machine. So we're just putting the finishing touches on. Fender loose. Running board loose. Dad's custom little step that is very common on Alice Chalmers to have that step. So we'll get all this finished up here shortly. Alright, running board, fender, all put on there. <laughs> it sits there and wiggles. And there you go. There's a step solid, Dad. Who's there, was? That's the old man step. Yeah. When you can't hide your leg up anymore. You're supposed to just be able to do this, but no. There's people out there who need this, and there's some people out there who need another step right about there. <laughs> yeah. And those are the people that shouldn't be on a tractor. Yeah. Yeah. So, pour fluid in it. Call it a day. Pretty yeah, much. Get it up the block. Oh yeah, get off the blocks, yeah. <coughs> well, there it is, dude. Yep. One hour's Chalmers brake job done. <laughs> Sorry, camera. I think the wheel just left that set. Yeah. There's something to be said about a good old tractor. Also something to be said about our awesome viewers who stuck around and watch us, even our car people who aren't begging the tractors, and even our new guys who might be Alice Chalmers aficionados or tractor aficionados. And we here at Scott Fallon want to thank you for watching the video. And we look forward to seeing the next one as we go tooting around on this old good old 1958 D14 Alice Chalmers. I've never been in the tractors when Dad got this thing. And uh, man, we're tractor people now. We're Dad's old farm boy, so he's used to D14. Grew up with. So, thank you guys for checking this one out. Look forward to seeing the next one as always. So take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Dad with his new mower.